Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Joy Taylor. On today's show, the NFLPA is gearing up to defend Ezekiel Elliott after accusing the NFL of a league-orchestrated conspiracy. Plus, college football is back. Joel Klatt joins the show to talk about some of the game's powerhouse teams. And is Kyrie Irving good enough to lead the Celtics to a championship? Skip, Shannon, let's get to it. We have to start with the shocking new developments in the Ezekiel Elliott case. The Players Association has requested a temporary restraining order asking a Texas court to block any suspension of Zeke. The NFLPA said there was, quote, a league orchestrated conspiracy by senior NFL executives against Elliott. They say that the NFL's director of investigations, Kia Roberts, recommended no suspension for Zeke after interviewing his accuser and finding her not to be credible. Roberts gave this information to Lisa Friel, who investigates domestic violence cases for the NFL. But Roberts was not allowed to give the information to Roger Goodell, and Friel then recommended a six-game suspension. Adam Schefter reported that Harold Henderson is under pressure to make a ruling in the case. If there's no ruling by Tuesday afternoon, Zeke will be eligible to play in the season opener against the Giants. So, Skip, there's a lot of new information here, a lot going on. What is your reaction? Joy, Shannon, I'll admit, until last night, pretty late last night here on the West Coast, I had never heard of Kia Wright Roberts. Fair to say? Mm -hmm. Now she has gone down in NFL history and Dallas Cowboy history as the woman who had the guts to blow the whistle on her boss, Roger Goodell, and ex expose his corruption in the weak, small-minded, wrong-headed, shameful way he runs the greatest league in the world. Mm -hmm. I don't know how Roger Goodell still has a job, but we'll discuss how he keeps his job in just a moment. But this morning, first of all, I want to applaud Kia Roberts for having the courage that she had. Mm -hmm. As Joy points out, she is the NFL's director of investigations, or at least she was the NFL's director of investigations because I don't know, but I'm going to have a hard time believing she's going to be able to keep that job. Mm -hmm. She risked that job because she wanted to do the right thing, which is to tell the truth. So she testified. I think she made a point of wanting to testify mm -hmm. at Ezekiel Elliott's appeals hearing that she was the only one to interview Zeke's accuser and that she recommended no punishment for Zeke and that Lisa Friel, who is Roger Goodell's chief advisor on domestic violence, excluded Kia Roberts from the meeting in which Goodell declared and decided six-game suspension. What? Wait a minute. That's the first I'd heard. So Lisa Friel didn't interview the accuser? Nope. We knew already Roger Goodell didn't interview, interview the accuser. Nope. And they ignored the conclusion of the one woman who did interview her, who is extremely, extremely qualified to come to a conclusion. Because let's look at, quickly, Kia Wright Roberts' background. She went to De La Salle High School in New Orleans, and then she went to Duke undergraduate. That'll work. Mm -hmm. Then she graduated from Vanderbilt Law School. That'll really work. Way to go, Vanderbilt. <laughs> Then she served for eight years as the assistant district attorney in Brooklyn. Brooklyn can get pretty rough. Mm -hmm. It's a little bougie in some parts now, but it's still got some really rough parts. Yep. And the cases she handled, hundreds of cases, involved domestic violence, sexual assault, attempted murder, weapons possession, narcotics, gang-related crimes. She's pretty much seen it all, I would yep. say. Wouldn't you think? Very well qualified. Yeah, who better to judge the credibility of a domestic violence accuser than Kia Roberts? So she came to the same conclusion that the investigators in Columbus, Ohio, and Fort Lauderdale came to with testimony is not consistent enough to be credible. Hmm, interesting. So they said no charges in Columbus or Fort Lauderdale, and she said no suspension, but obviously Roger Gell Goodell had already decided, with or without credible evidence, he was going to come down hard on and make an example of Ezekiel Elliott on domestic violence. 
I think Tom Brady can somehow relate to all of the above because we just went through a similar case, obviously not involving domestic violence, with Deflategate. But this time, the NFLPA lawyers had the good sense. They learned their lesson a year ago, a year and a half ago. They beat the NFL lawyers to the punch to file a lawsuit in their jurisdiction, which is the state of Texas, mm -hmm. near Dallas and around Frisco, which is where the Cowboys New operate from. And in that lawsuit, they alleged that there is a, a league-orchestrated conspiracy to hide evidence which would completely exonerate Ezekiel Elliott. Man, that's a strong charge. A league-orchestrated conspiracy. That would go to the very top. That would expose Roger Goodell. And I think he just got busted. I think he got exposed for all the things I don't like about him. And today, up front, and we're going to go layer upon lever, layer upon layer about this, but I want to congratulate Kia Wright Roberts for having the guts. Skip, I, I agree with everything you said. Um, I understand the league is trying to clean up what happened in 2014. That shield took a huge dent. And a lot of times, Skip, you know, when you're driving your car and you, you know, you might veer off to the left or right, sometimes you overcorrect. And that's where the problem lies. And this is what happened with the NFL. And I told him, Skip, I get it. The optics, that's the word that was coming to our our lexicon over the last couple of years. Optics. They want to show um, the viewing public, the NFL fans, that we're serious about domestic violence. They want to take on in America that we're at the forefront, that this is not tolerated in our league. But Skip, I said, this is not the case that you want to sink your teeth in. This is not the case that you want to show the public that we're serious about because there were too many inconsistencies. And you see, Skip, what happened was is that this is where you and I differ. See, the commissioner after 2014, he said, I'm going to hire the NFL. We're going to hire people that's more qualified to deal, deal with domestic violence, sexual assault, child abuse, because that's not what as an entertainment, we're not qualified to handle that. So he put the people in place. Okay, boom. So what he did and what my sources are telling me is that they believe this is why the commissioner didn't hear testimony from either. Because guess who did? Kia Wright Roberts. Mm -hmm. Lisa Friel is her immediate boss. That's correct. So now... And Lisa Friel was hired about a year before Kia Roberts was. Correct. Yep. Now, the commissioner appointed her... Lisa, uh, Lisa Friel mm -hmm. is Kia boss. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm told that, although in the report she wrote up, I don't think there's nothing, because I've seen too many of these cases, I don't think there's anything here. Lisa Friel also said she couldn't sign up on the credibility of the week. Yeah, of that, the that was reported in the Fort Worth Star-Telegram, but I, I don't know that for a fact, because she, she wouldn't even allow... Kia Roberts to come to the final meeting. But Lisa Friel wouldn't, and that's the thing. Yeah. Now, she wouldn't, because she based her testimony, because she didn't interview the witness, Tiffany. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, I'm, I guess I'm not supposed to mention her name, but the victim. Mm -hmm. So alleged, alleged, she, alleged, victim. alleged victim. Mm -hmm. Now, from what I'm told, Skip, is that she, the notes that Kia wrote, mm -hmm. Lisa Friel said, well, Commissioner, there's nothing there. But in turn, she still recommended the six games. Because guess why, Skip? Help me out. Lisa Friel is going to fall on this sword. The commissioner is going to say, I turn it over to them. Mm -hmm. They recommended six games. Okay. The appeal process, I turned that over to Harold Henderson. He either, let, he either stayed it or he reduced it. I got a buffer between everybody. Mm -hmm. Lisa Friel, Harold Henderson. Mm. Ah, you see, because mm. he last time with the flake gate skip, he got an opportunity to hear Tom Brady. Mm. You see what he did there? Mm -hmm. He's like, I'm not making that mistake again. Yeah. I'm going to pass the buck. I'm going to let somebody else fall on this sword because I want no part of it. Mm. That's why Jerry Jones was so adamant. There's nothing. Skip, mm -hmm. he, he didn't say, well, you know, hey, there's no, he said there was nothing here, and he said it last year. He would be very, very upset, and he might have to have a call with the commissioner mm -hmm. if Ezekiel Elliott was suspended. Mm -hmm. Skip, what happened was I don't think they thought this was going to get this far. I thought they thought Zeke was going to take his punishment for the simple fact what happened on, on St. Patrick's Day and all these other instances. 
they's like, well, he'll just take his punishment and he'll go away. Mm. Zeke will be the first to tell you, I've done some things that I'm not proud of, but I didn't do that. Yeah. And that's the one, Skip, all this other stuff, if you were to suspend him for some of the things that you know he did. I do. You got me. Zeke and his representatives, I do not believe, would have had a problem. Okay. This is really the only thing that they were going to fight. Yeah. And they said it from day one. Anything more than zero, mm -hmm. we're going to court. And I'm not talking about this NFL court. Skip, there can never be trust between. Mm. This is what I believe, Skip. In order for the NFL to move forward, Skip, I'm not so sure how D. Smith, the NFL PA president, and Commissioner Goodell can ever do business again mm. because they believe they railroaded Tom Brady. Mm. They are trying to railroad Zeke, yep. and it's coming out. Because remember, a couple of years ago, the NFLPA found that the NFL owed them $50 million. Mm. The NFL said, yeah, we do, but we're not going to give it to you. Take us to court. Mm. 2011, the NFL locked the players out. Also, they signed an extension or TV contracts without telling the PA. <sighs> Skip, there's no trust between these two. Mm. I don't, how, Skip, if I don't trust you, you don't trust me, how do we move forward? Commissioner, you had a perfect opportunity. You can't do, you can't do the right thing for the wrong reasons. Mm. And he was trying that's to do true. right. That's, that's well said. That sums it up. That's it, Skip. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. Go to the, go to the tape and look at Little Zeke. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. You can't, you can't assault a woman mm -hmm. in public, nor in private. But we saw this. We're going to give you three games. Mm. Move on. Yep. No harm, no, no harm done, but there's no, nobody's going to cry. Skip, there's going to be no uproar. Zeke, we saw it. Everybody saw what you did. Zeke's going to probably bow his head, take his punishment. He says, but I'm not going to let you hang those initials on me. I'm not going to let you put DV on my resume because mm. I didn't do it. I've done some things I'm not proud of, but I didn't do this thing. And because you didn't punish me for the things I did do, I'm not going to allow you to punish me for what I didn't do. Mm. And this is, where, this is where we are currently. Mm. Have you changed any of your views after last night? Uh, no, it was kind of trending towards this direction yesterday. Yep. I had a feeling that this was the shoe that was going to drop. For me, um, the trust is broken. You mentioned the trust between the players and the NFL. The trust between the media and the public and the players in the NFL, to me, is broken now. When you put a punishment out like this, we're supposed to assume that you did your due diligence, you have the right people in place, you put together this, this board to make a decision, mm -hmm. and it's looking like they botched it, which was my worst fear, because now, moving forward, when someone is legitimate, no. why should we believe them? Mm. You messed it up before, so this discredits victims moving forward, unless you have a, yep. a, 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 a gang of witnesses yeah. and, a, mm -hmm. and a smoking gun, a video or, or, or pictures mm -hmm. or yep. an arrest, why are we to believe that it happened? And yep. that's what the NFL didn't understand going into it, that messing up this investigation, that is the repercussions mm -hmm. of it. The only thing worse than domestic violence or abuse is being accused of it when you haven't done it. And, mm. and Skip, what the, th the thing was is that they could always hide behind Article 46. Well, you gave me this power. I can dole out the punishment how I deem necessary. Well, they could I'm hide. I'm assuming he's still going to try yeah. to hide behind it. They could hide on. behind it as yeah. long as they didn't say it was domestic yeah. violence. Right. Yeah. If yeah. they said it was conduct detrimental, suspend him for eight games and right. then have him appeal it down to two or right. whatever it is that you need to do. But as soon as you put it on something that didn't happen, now all the credibility is gone. There's no more credibility. The credibility was damaged coming out of Tom Brady. I mean, what, what's left? Mm. This is much more serious than deflate gate. Skip, think about this. Kia Roberts is the only is the only investigator that interviewed the alleged victim. I heard it was about six occasions. She's the only one. Now you tell me a situation where the investigator would not be called to testify. <laughs> That's everything. She did it, Skip. She's the only one. And I told you, I said, why wouldn't it, why wouldn't the commissioner? want to interview Tiffany, uh, Tiffany Thompson, the alleged victim, why would he not want to ask her questions? Why would he not want to look in her eyes, see her body language? Because that's what Kia Roberts did. Mm -hmm. Because that was her expertise. Mm -hmm. So she could ask questions. Mm, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not liking what I'm seeing here. Mm. Why would you not? Commissioner should have demanded, I need to see the investigator that talked to one Miss Thompson. 
That's who I need to talk to. Why are you talking to Lisa Freel, her boss, when her boss did not interview the alleged victim? Mm -hmm. That makes no sense to me, Skip. So that in and of itself should tell you something. We don't really want to know the truth. We got a set of facts that we want to, that we're going to go with. Mm. And hey, uh, viewing public, buying public, who comes to these games and, and buy our sport and support our sport, trust us, believe it. Skip, this makes no sense. The one person that talked to the alleged victim, that asked the questions, that saw her body language, and she's not forthcoming, inconsistency, the credibility. The one person you don't, commissioner, you don't ask her? You ask her boss who didn't interview that's basically going over her notes? You know what the political phrase is? It's called plausible deniability, yeah. right? So you can say, don't look at me. I, I don't know. I just sort of went with, oh, wait, you didn't go with what your lead investigator said, mm -hmm. concluded. No suspension. So clearly you had an agenda from Correct. the start. You wanted to make an example out of the breakout rookie star from last season on America's team over domestic violence. Yes. You came down too soft on Ray Rice, and you could argue Josh Brown. Mm -hmm. Certainly, I don't even know if he even knew what was going on with Josh Brown. But, but now you're going to come down absurdly hard without convincing credible evidence. You're going to railroad. You're going to frame Ezekiel for domestic violence. So now we have the flip side of the old Al Capone cliche, which was they couldn't get him for all those murders he ordered, so they got him for tax right. evasion. But in this case, tax evasion is domestic violence, yes. right? Yes. So you're saying, let's let's bust Zeke for domestic violence? Um, well, you can't. It's not tax evasion. No. You didn't get him on a technicality. You got him on, arguably, short of murder, the, the biggest thing you could charge yep. somebody with, right? Yeah. And so you're going to try to taint him, and, and it's why it's why Jerry Jones, I kept saying, I, I know Jerry. Yeah. I, he doesn't do this. He'll say occasional dumb things, but he ain't stupid. Right. So he's not going to continue to go to the end of the limb day after day after day saying there's nothing there unless he knows full well there's nothing there as far as he knows that, that there's credible right. evidence ag against right. the accuser. Right. So it's why ESPN the magazine reported that back in the middle of the season at the owners meeting that Jerry was seen going nose to nose with Lisa Friel mm -hmm. saying, you have no evidence because I'm assuming by then he was already aware yes. of the fact that your lead investigator, your head of investigations for the National Football League is saying, I'm sorry, I'm not buying this. Right. After, as you say, interviewing her many times, yes. not just once, but several, maybe up to six times. Skip, even in the court cases, they always call the lead investigator to testify. Mm. He the one that asked the question. He got he got the statement. Why would you not the guy that, the person that got the statement? Skip, why would you not ask? Why would the commissioner? Did he not want to know mm. what really went on or what she really thought? Because mm. this makes no sense to me. Like you said, he had no, he has this wall, Skip. I didn't recommend the six games because the policy that we put in place that we came to an agreement on mm -hmm. all the people that's, that's more knowledgeable and qualified on this topic than me, yep. that the minimum should be six games. We came down with the minimum. Well, I'm not hearing the appeal. That's Harold Henderson. If Harold Henderson wants any credibility, mm -hmm. he has to throw this out. Throw it out. He's got to throw it out and let the NFL, hey, if you want some more of this NFL, you go to court. But I, my, I can't in good conscience knowing that the lead investigator, the only person that got an opportunity to look in that young lady's eyes and ask the questions and see her body language, the tone in which she answered those questions, she said, I don't think there should be any game suspension. Eight years of, do of doing what she did, mm -hmm. domestic violence, sexual assaults, attempted murder, <laughs> all this, Skip, after a while, Skip, you get very, very comfortable in knowing. Mm -hmm. you, you know when a person is being forthcoming. You know when a person is lying. You know when there are inconsistencies mm -hmm. in the story because it's been so many occasions. And for the commissioner not to hear the one person that talked to the alleged victim is unacceptable. There's nothing he can say. Skip, even if he did know, it's his job to know. What did you know? When did you know it? 
then what did you do about it? Because mm. if you didn't know, what did, he, what did he tell Sean Payton? Sean Payton said, I had no idea Bounty Gate was going on. He says, you're the head coach. Yep. You should have known. That's correct. You're the commissioner of the NFL. Got her oh, Lisa Friel, you hired her. Mm -hmm. Keel Roberts, you hired him. What you didn't know, you were supposed to know. Mm -hmm. And because you didn't know, that's a failure of your duty on your part. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to answer to, to them other 32 owners. Mm -hmm. Well, now, Skip, this is still not the owners. They decide commissioner's fate. Now, we know, too. How many more can they get on their side if they want to make a change at the top? Because mm. we know they got two, and those are the two most powerful. The two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know that one in Texas, you know, he, 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 he real powerful, Skip. Mm -hmm. He owns the most valuable team in all of sports in the world. Mm -hmm. That's how powerful he is. <clears throat> so now we're down to the stalemate that we talked about yesterday. Okay, so... Does Harold Henderson try to compromise? Does he try to present, well, okay, we had procedural violations here, so we reduce from six to three. No, it's domestic violence. Yeah. Did, are you saying he did it or didn't do right. it? Aren't we back to did he or didn't he? As simple as that, Skip. She said and he said. Are you believe Somebody has to be right here because right. this is too big a thing to be wrong on, nope. right? You're so, exactly right. So now you can't reduce to three games. Let's compromise with three games. People will be, as you pointed out yesterday, thank you very much, will be at least as outraged over a compromise on domestic violence as they would be on the, the other way around if he was wrongfully accused with six games. Correct. Right? Skip, I was always told anything less than zero, they were going to court. Not one, they weren't going, they, they didn't care if it was two, if it was one. Anything less than zero, mm -hmm. Zeke was prepared to take this to court. And I told you in the beginning, Skip, I said, now, if there's nothing there and he suspend this young man, I told you from day one, I'm going to court. Because there are two, insti there are two uh, 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 municipalities, Ohio and Florida. Listen to her testimony, listen to her uh, uh, statements. Mm -hmm. It's like, we can't, there's nothing, we, we can't. We can't go to a jury with this. There's no way. And they said no. Now, I understand that the NFL has a bar about this. About, so you could, it's a real low bar, Skip. Mm -hmm. You can get up under it. Or when you step right over, you don't need to get up under it. You just step over it. Mm -hmm. Skip, I get that. But, Skip, not this, Skip. Do you understand? For a man, Skip, do you understand? They'll, if you think about it, they're more apt to forgive a murder than someone that they'll abuse a woman or someone that sexually assault a woman. They have no time for that, Skip. That's the lowest of the low. And you trying to pin this young... The man's 21, 22 years of age. You trying to pin this on him. He'd have to carry that for the rest of his life. Mm. So, bottom line to this discussion, my gut feeling right here, right now, is that Ezekiel Elliott will be eligible to play a week from Sunday night in game number one against the New York Giants. Yes. After that, I don't know for sure because we were, at some point we're going to get back to Article 46. So now that Goodell has been busted, I think he's been exposed. I think he should be fired. In our next segment, we can get into how he survives thanks again. to the other 30 owners. Right. But now, again, they, they beat the – NFL lawyers to court, right. so they're in the right jurisdiction, and I'm pretty sure a Texas judge in the neighborhood of where the Cowboys play w would sit back and say, sure, you, you, th they file for a restraining order, it'll become an injunction against, so now Ezekiel will stay eligible, but at what point does Article 46 kick back in? This is a little over my head because it becomes legalese, but at some point, Roger Goodell can just say, I don't care what any of you say. I don't care what the evidence said. He's gone for six games. He could, he could stand on 46 because last collective bargaining, they said, hey, you can be judge, jury, and executioner. But they got to be some, they got to be something. At least in the flake gate skip, they had the guy going into the, 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 the little area. He stayed for 90 seconds. The, the protocol, they caught him trying to get, sneak the balls out of the... Uh, that was uh, the, really all they had. Exactly. Yep. So, you had, so you had a lot of circumstance. Mm -hmm. Skip, they got nothing. Mm -hmm. the, la the lady said no. Forensic, their forensic experts said, well, this is what happened. 
Well, my sources tell me that Zeke brought his own forensics, one of the foremost authority in that field. He says, I don't know how they can tell by the picture. He said, you need to see it in person to see the discoloration and the breakage of the skin. So, and all of a sudden, and it's like, well, why would you sign off on this? And everybody was like shaking their head, Skip. Mm. I'm like, Article 46 is one thing, Skip. And there are a lot of guys that players currently play that don't trust the commission, that doesn't trust the NFL. If he were to still hide behind Article 46, there's no question in my mind he would lose all 1,500 of those players' trust. Mm. What is the point of this, though? What is the, I, I don't, I, there's just no reason in it for me. I don't, why? Like, why dig in on, on, on this case? Is there anyone in the room that's like, hey, hey guys, uh, maybe not just, my, my humble opinion, maybe not the best idea. Just, right. is no one, no one wants to speak up? We all know that Roger well, Goodell her. should, fine. <laughs> well, not anymore. <laughs> until, and now, she and now, until, until she no. finally said something. Yep. We all know that Roger Goodell should not have ultimate power. No. We, we already knew that, no. that there's been enough cases that where he's messed and, it and up Just to quickly, that. just to, to make sure everybody got this, they went outside the league office and brought in four people to serve on a committee, all of them highly qualified. Yes to assess this to begin with right. and to give their results to another committee, including Lisa Friel and Jeff Pash, the, the general counsel for the league, mm -hmm. and that uh, Adolfo Birch, who's the labor policy mm -hmm. chief. Yes, yep. Okay, So they were in on the final session with Lisa Friel, who does not look good here either, with Roger Goodell on punishment. On right. how, okay, so the committee, to me, was a complete sham. Yeah. It's, it's just sham. It's just, look what we did. We brought in four highly qualified people from, you know, captains of industry to come in and give the recommendations. This. But yeah. at the but, bottom, the bottom yeah. line is it still comes down to Roger Goodell is the one that makes the decision. He does. And he, and he, he did. He should not be the final say on not. the punishment. It should be a panel of people that are presented with all the evidence and then they vote on it. We have something in society like this already. Yep. It's called yep. a jury. Mm -hmm. Skip, but here's the Good thing. Good point. Okay, you got those four people. You got Lisa Friel, you got Roger Goodell, you got Jeff Pash, mm -hmm. Adolfo Burton. Yep. You got all of them. Bring Kia Roberts in, let her sit down in front of them and tell them what she knows. Then if you make that decision, okay, I, Skip, I might not agree with it, but at least you heard from her. If you can make your decision. But, but the, they knew already, I'm sure she'd made it clear, she was the dissenting voice in the office. She was saying, this is crazy. She might have been the dissenting voice with Lisa Friel. Yeah. I don't believe Adolfo Birch. I don't believe these other guys. Her, the commissioner didn't hear it. He needs to hear from her. She needs to be in there. Okay, Kia, you did the investigation. What do you think? As a professional with this much on the line and, and take the business side out of it, just the societal impact of this, how do you sit there and say you, you feel comfortable making a decision like that without talking to the person that's accusing you? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I mean, they should be ashamed of themselves. This is yeah. terrible. It's a joke. It, it's all shameful, but my gut feeling is Zeke will be able to play on Sunday. Do you agree with that? Yes. And then what? Is he completely exonerated? Will he? Is, did, will this go completely you away? The NFL is not going to let this thing go. That's what I'm saying. The, the, now, Roger Goodell, for all of my dislike of, and again, I don't dislike him off the field, just yeah. the way he operates this league, he is a proud man. He is a stubborn man. He will fight back with all of his might and power. So my worst-case scenario as a Dallas Cowboy fan is that Zeke will stay eligible for the first nine, ten games, and then somehow this will kick back in and he will be gone for the end, for the stretch run. Hey, you lost. You played the game. Yep. You tried to play a game. You lost. Commish, you lost. You lost. He lost. You got your, you, you tried to, you were stealing he cookies. He lost the game and he lost and you got, face. Yes, and you he got lost caught. reputation. You got caught with your hand yeah. in the cookie jar. Right. Just let it go. Right. Don't make a bad situation worse. How do you do that? You, hey. Do you have a press conference? Do you say I screwed no, up? No, I ain't gonna come out there. I can't let y'all see me. I can't let y'all see me red face. That his face will be redder than George's dress. I can't let you see that. That is correct. It should be. We're just gonna move forward with uh, uh, Zeke. Go play. Mm. And we go. Just let Harold announce on Monday or Tuesday. Can we pretend this didn't happen? No. Unfortunately, we can't. no. <laughs> exactly. We can't. No mercy. Hey guys, before we move on, I wanted to tell you that the Undisputed podcast is brought to you by Barbasol. The biggest thing to happen to Barbasol since shaving cream is also the only thing to happen to Barbasol since shaving cream. Introducing new Barbasol razors. The brand America trusts for a close, comfortable shave now has premium disposable razors. Barbasol's close shave technology on every razor means you get an advanced pivoting head and ultra-thin open flow blades. 
The Ultra 6 Plus Razor also features a seventh blade specifically designed to refine and style tricky areas like under the nose, sideburns, and beard. Visit Barbersol.com and get a $2 savings coupon and see for yourself why Barbersol razors are the number one new disposable razors out there. You're looking good, America. You're shaving with Barbersol. No mercy. We're joined now live in New York by Chris Carter, whose new show, First Things First, starts Tuesday morning at 6.30 Eastern here on FS1. Good morning, Chris. Tell everyone out there why they need to watch First Things First on Tuesday morning. Oh, uh, well, if you don't want to watch for myself, you got to watch for your good friend, Nick Wright. And recently, um, we're very, very fortunate as a Fox team, FS1, to be able to hire Jenna Wolf to bring her aboard to be the co-host. So we're really looking forward to launching on Tuesday after a great holiday weekend. Fresh takes, a lot like you guys do, a little different style. You guys are the best at debating. So people are like, why are you going to do a debate show? We're not going to do. We're going to do the first sports conversations, big opinions, big personalities starting on Tuesday, September the 5th. Be on before you guys, to launch you guys off into the stratosphere where you guys deserve to be. A little bit different than you guys show, but still within the FS1 family as far as what we're doing, as far as big opinions and the personalities that we're bringing. Mm. Chris Carter, I want you to know Skip, that how you doing, buddy? I'm, I'm doing great. Or I'm, I'm doing better this morning than I was yesterday. But I, I want you to know that even okay. though you and I occasionally clash back on ESPN, I have come to know you. I've come to love you. I've come to believe in you. You were always a ratings magnet at ESPN, a powerful voice. And I want you to know that I feel blessed to have you jumpstarting our show morning after morning. We appreciate that. Oh, no, thank you. Skip, you're one of the people that took the loop, leap of faith and decided to come to FS1. And then a number of us subsequently, Shannon, Joy, even before that, mm -hmm. have decided that we trust FS1 as far as our career. Um, we're looking forward to it. Colin in the afternoon with the herd, you guys leading into them, and now Nick and, and Jenna and myself, we have an opportunity to have full programming throughout the day. The live sports talking market is wide open in the morning. There's people getting divorced, so it's a perfect opportunity for us to build a launch. Hey, hey, hey CC, I hate you got that nice view, but that's okay. We got the weather, but we need a nice big lead because Skip kind of slow, and he getting, old, uh, getting his old age. He can't run like he once could. Mm. He's down to five miles in the morning mm. instead of the ten. Mm. And yet, yeah, you know what? No, no, no. It, it's, it's, it's a pleasure to have a clutch receiver kicking <laughs> off our show now as opposed to this guy. Right. <laughs> Shannon, no, anytime, I, anytime I'm on the set, we three wide. We, we got to keep you in the middle. We three wide on you. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're very excited about First Things First on Tuesday. Uh, we can't wait for it. But, Chris, we've got to talk to you about the big story of the day. The NFL PA accused the NFL of a league orchestrated mm -hmm. conspiracy against Ezekiel Elliott's. What's your reaction? Well, I think conspiracy, it, it's really hard to, to prove conspiracy. Um, what I think they have um, in talking to people that are very, very close to Zeke in the situation, um, they thought that the burden of proof was on the National Football League. They thought that they had enough evidence. They thought that they could present some things and present in their case um, that might be able to punch holes in the six-game suspension. Um, they didn't think that any domestic violence occurred. So I'm not surprised um, that they were going to dispute it. Um, I'm not surprised that they weren't going to take some type of falling on the mercy of the court saying, yes, we agree, something happened, but not to the degree for which um, I'm being accused of. That was not their approach. Their approach is he doesn't deserve any type of suspension. And that's kind of the basis of their case based on a number of things through investigating that they presented to Harold Henderson the last several days. So, CeCe, now where do we go from here? You, you've seen some of the testimony that's come out. The, late, the lead investigator said she did not feel comfortable with the young lady's test, uh, uh, the alleged victim's testimony, the credibility, the inconsistencies in her story. She did not feel comfortable mm -hmm. that Zeke should get any games. So how does the league stand up and say, yeah, he still deserves six games? Well, that's just only one, that's one piece of information that came out of the meetings. Mm -hmm. There are other things in the meeting that didn't come out. Now, first of all, um, you guys have been following the NFL for a long time. Uh, it's hard to prove the NFL 
that they would come up with a plan that they would suspend one of their great and up coming stars in Zeke Elliott by a conspiracy theory. I mean, so many people would have to be involved. Um, the NFL didn't put that young lady in Zeke's life. It wasn't like she was planted there. That was a relationship that he had before he came into the National Football League. Zeke was already under investigation before he signed the NFL contract. So I don't believe it was, there was a conspiracy. I do believe that as we get more information, because up until Tuesday, we had only heard the NFL side as far as leaking information. Now we're starting to get Zeke's side of things. Now I've talked to people that are very, very close to him, and they feel like they have a strong case. The NFL is under the gun here because they established that domestic violence or signs of domestic violence, a player would get six games. Now, if they don't give six games, what kind of domestic policy do they have? That's what they established. Six games would be the minimum a player would be suspended for. Now, these hearings aren't about anything else. They're not about Zeke being careless, doing other things. It's not about the fight that he had in a bar. Did he break a guy's? It's not about pulling someone's top down. This is about domestic violence only. So for me, it's going to be hard to come off of six games. It's either six games or no games because domestic violence is the only thing that they are they only have them um, are having the hearing for so chris carter you and i have talked a lot off camera about what's going on behind the scenes here but i want you to know that i opened this show today by applauding kia wright roberts for having the guts to testify against her biggest boss roger goodell and and also against her immediate boss lisa friel and I think exposed some corruption behind the scenes because, as Shannon points out, she was the only one to interview the accuser. And for mm -hmm. her to step up like that put Roger Goodell in, in a very tricky situation here because, again, I think he got exposed because I think he had an agenda going in. He was going to make an example of Ezekiel with or without credible, convincing evidence. And if you know Kia's background, Duke undergraduate, Vanderbilt Law School, and then chose to be the assistant DA in Brooklyn, handling hundreds of domestic violence cases, sexual assault cases, murder cases, drug cases, gang violence cases. It, it, she has been there and done all that. So I think for her to look into the eyes of the accuser and say, not credible enough, is very credible to me. So, so now, what is your view of her and what she stepped forward and did? Well, you make a good point as, as far as her information not being allowed to be in the report or her not being able to communicate um, her opinion towards Roger. But Lisa Frail is her boss. So I've had a number of occasions where I really thought something, but my boss had a difference of opinion. Now, my boss in Lisa is given the overall opinion of the investigation to Roger and a number of other people. So this is not just one person. In the Ray Rice investigation, there were people that recommended to Roger he shouldn't be suspended. There were also people recommended he should be suspended for two games or a game, all right? I'm not saying they're right or wrong, but this is not the first time someone's made a recommendation based on, oh, they shouldn't be suspended. That's why you have a group of people and you get a bunch of different people's opinion on this. I got, I got confidence in Lisa Friel and her ability when she was hired because her, if you think the lady that was doing the investigating her resume was strong, Lisa, Lisa, look at Lisa Friel's background. Yep, it's strong. And the reason why the NFL hired her and brought her, uh, brought her aboard a couple years ago. So I'm not gonna get caught up with just one piece of the investigation. There are a lot of pieces to this puzzle. That's just one piece that doesn't fit. Uh, CC, this is where I think you and I differ. I think they should give great latitude and great deference to the lead investigator. She spoke to this, uh, uh, this alleged victim on six different occasions, from what I'm being told. And for her not to talk directly to the guy that's going to hand down the punishment. And I get sometimes our bosses do have a difference of opinion. But when it comes down to something like this, it's hard for me to believe that the lead investigator would not be heard. 
It is hard because we're also on the outside. We're only getting a little, um, little, little pieces of what the overall picture is. Also, um, I have come to find out through my investigation, through my sources, there's also other information that would incriminate Zeke. So, yes, you guys are saying the investigator, she recommended because the witness wasn't credible. Yeah, the witness said that she was going to sue Zeke, she was going to ruin his career. She did a lot of things that women who have been abused that they do. Now, her overall credibility in being able to prove in a court of law is totally different. Was he guilty of domestic violence? I'm going to tell you something. I don't need an investigator, but something happened to that young lady. All right? I don't know if Zeke committed domestic violence, but something happened to her during the period of time that she was with Ezekiel. Now, whose fault is that? What happened? I don't know all that, but I do know that investigators also said that her bruises were inconsistent with someone falling down or bumping into things, and they were more consistent with someone who had experienced domestic violence. So, so that's another piece that okay. several people had told the panel also in inquiring about Ezekiel and did he do this. So, Chris, from what you're hearing, from what I'm hearing from you, it sounds like you're saying six games is going to stand. If he's not suspended for six games, what kind of domestic policy do you have? This is their policy, six games minimum. I'm not getting into did Zeke do it, did I think he didn't do it? That's irrelevant. I'm talking about what the policy is. And you don't have a policy if someone you think committed domestic violence and you don't give them six games. It's inconsistent. The Ray Rice thing, it was botched. It was inconsistent. The Josh Brown uh, investigation, it was botched. It was inconsistent. With Ezekiel Elliott, there should be some type of consistency if you're going to have a program. If not, just let be a free-for-all like it was before. Don't punish guys for domestic violence or violent crimes against women, elderly, or children. We'll just let it go like the wild, wild west. CC, for me, the problem that I have with that is that when you're dealing with this issue, it can't be a think. You can't think somebody did this. You got to be able to prove this beyond a reasonable shadow of a doubt because you're, you're going to tag this man. There are things that are, you know, in, in, in the hierarchy, I believe a sexual predator a domestic abuser, they get viewed differently even than a murderer. And to tag this young man with those initials, DV, that's that, no, I, I don't need to think. You got to prove this. You're not going to hang this on, if it's me. Now, I'm talking about me, I'm not talking about Zeke. But I'm not going to let you hang these initials on me because you thought. You need to be able to prove it. And the burden of proof should not be on Zeke. She brought these charges. She said this happened. It shouldn't be on Zeke to prove he was innocent. Uh, Shannon, as you know, being a public figure, as long as you've been a public figure, your brother was a public <laughs> figure. I know. Everything is not black and white, all right? As far as the NFL and their ability to investigate, they do not have to prove what they have to prove in the court of law. Their burden of proof is a lot less than what you have to prove. Now, Zeke and his camp, they wouldn't take any type of leniency. They wouldn't admit to any type of guilt. So Zeke feels the same way that you feel. The people around him feel the same way. Kessler, his lawyer, that's why they filed the suit. They feel the same way. They're trying to get his name totally cleared from these charges. Good stuff, CC. Be sure to check out First Things First with Chris, Nick Wright, and Jenna Wolf starting Tuesday at 6.30 Eastern. We're looking forward to it. Chris, thanks for joining us. Deuces. No mercy. Yesterday, the Big Ten took over New York City with more than 100 people in football pads running through the streets of Manhattan. Then they rang the opening bell at the NASDAQ. It's all to celebrate Big Ten football coming to Fox and FS1. And it starts tonight with number eight Washington at Rutgers. We're joined now live at Rutgers with Joel Klatt, who will call the game with Gus Johnson. Ooh. Good morning, Joel. Hi, Joel. Good morning. How are you guys doing today? Doing Good. Great. Let's get into the big game last night. Second-ranked Ohio State got off to a slow start and trailed Indiana into the third quarter. The Buckeyes offense then turned it on in the second half led by 181 rushing yards by freshman J.K. Dobbins, and they pulled away for a 49-21 to win. So, Joel, should Ohio State be encouraged or discouraged by their performance last night? You know, this game last night with Ohio State, it reminded me a lot of the McGregor-Mayweather fight in which 
A clearly overmatched and outskilled opponent used energy, enthusiasm, and passion early to create the illusion of evenness. And in the end, it was experience and talent that totally trumped the opponent. You know, I'm not concerned what? at all with Ohio State. In fact, crazy. when you look at what this ha what this <laughs> game was in its entirety, it was a dominant performance by what will go down and be considered throughout college football as the best defensive front seven in our sport right now. Look at what they were able to do putting pressure on the quarterback. All of those defensive ends like Tyquan Lewis, the returning Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year, he got a couple of sacks, five sacks in total for Ohio State. They racked up 600 yards of offense. The talent on the outside is something that we didn't see from Ohio State a year ago, and that's a year in which they went to the playoff. I know that they didn't look great offensively early, but they got that thing going, and that offense in the second half was something that we didn't see a year ago, and really for the last two years for the Buckeyes, I'm not worried at all, in fact, I was actually encouraged with what I saw from Ohio State. If anything, this proves to the entire country that they're better than they were a year ago because they're more explosive offensively than they were. Hmm. Joel, I, I don't know if you actually watched the McGregor fight, but McGregor <laughs> won the eighth I round did. and had Mayweather in trouble early in the ninth round and then just ran out of no. gas. Is that what happened in that game last no. night? I don't think no, that... No, no, no. Wait, did Ohio... I, I, I saw Ohio State clearly overmatched fighter... Oh. No, 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 no. McGregor was totally overmatched and outskilled, well, except for the first couple of rounds, and then May Mayweather was just toying with him, and then know, he beat him up. You know why? Because he's actually a professional boxer. Oh, I see what you meant. So you had a preconceived <laughs> notion going into the fight, and you tried to make it fit your preconceived notion, but I didn't have a preconceived notion last night. I just sat back and said, <laughs> how good is Ohio State? And you know what Ohio State's defense reminded me of? Saban's defenses oh, in big goodness. games when they just get torched oh, and you guys try go. to cover for them and give them a pass <laughs> because they can't stop the pass. So last night, Indiana throws for 420 yards. They couldn't run a lick. They had 17 yards rushing. But to give up 420 through the air and kind of hang in the game for two and a half quarters, I don't know if that's a great sign because y you would think that 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 defensive front of, of Ohio State it goes like 12 deep in, in the defensive line. They needed to get after Lego quicker than they did, and they didn't for a long time. They were getting torched, I thought. Well, part of the issue with that is that volume is going to create numbers. So if you just look at total passing yards, yeah, they gave up a lot of total passing yards, but you don't take into consideration that the yards per attempt were actually down. They intercepted Lego, I believe, three times, turned them over three times, intercepted them a couple of times, in particular in situations where their offense could quickly capitalize with points, which is the mark of a quality, if not championship level uh, team. Uh, plus 65 passing attempts, you're going to give up somewhere in the neighborhood of 350 yards. That's just the mathematics of it. Mm. So this whole notion of total defense, total passing defense, in particular in the college game, really needs to get thrown out. And you need to start looking at yards per attempt, points per possession. If you look at this game in its entirety, Ohio State, 49 points, close to 600 yards of offense, and they hold Indiana to 21 points. That's the number mm. that matters. It was actually more dominant than what they've been with Indiana in the past. Mm. Shannon, save your boy. <laughs> Joel, I'm looking at Ohio State, <laughs> and early on I wasn't impressed, and I, I agree with you. I think – it reminded me a lot of the Conor McGregor fight, and the, oh, you know, and please. Ohio State ended yeah. up knocking Rutgers out. Yeah. But maybe it's just me. But JT Barrett, I'm not impressed. I mean, you have a guy that has seven skill position players, four wide receivers, a, a running back, and a tight end to go in the first three rounds. I'm just not impressed with him. Can he lead them to a national title? Because it was Cordell Jones that won that t national title for him, not JT Barrett. You know, what's interesting with, with Barrett is that we haven't seen him improve, you know, and, and that's what all of us would like to see is see some uh, improvement from the year before. I thought it would take place. He's got a couple of coaches that I think a lot of. First of all, his offensive coordinator, Kevin Wilson, I thought was going to change the passing game, get more downfield, which is what we saw in the second half. And then Ryan Day comes in. He's a former Chip Kelly disciple, if you will, and he's their quarterback coach. I thought he would be improved. I thought he would be improved not only with his quicker delivery, but I thought he would be more accurate. Did he leave a little to be desired? Yes. I think JT Barrett left a little to be desired. If I were concerned about one area of Ohio, State te uh, Ohio State's team, it would be Barrett's inability to get the ball down the field. Now, 
those athletes on the outside, in particular a freshman getting close to 30 carries and going for over 100 yards and J.K. Dobbins, do you see the, the speed from Campbell and Dixon on the outside? These guys are more explosive than they were a year ago. This in the skill positions reminds me more of that 14 team with the Elliots and the wide receivers on the outside mm -hmm. that were able to get down the field and ultimately score a lot of points. And I think that's going to help Barrett as this season moves along. No mercy. Next up, number one, Alabama will open their season tomorrow against number three, Florida State. This is the first time that the top three teams have met in their opening game of the season. Bama is a seven-point favorite heading into tomorrow's showdown in Atlanta. Joel, how much of a chance do you give Florida State to pull the upset? I, I think they've got a great chance. Florida State is a really good team, uh, and in particular in the right areas to match up against what Alabama might be bringing to the table. I think this is the best secondary that Jalen Hurts will have played in his career. Uh, this is the most talented secondary in the country that Florida State has. They probably have the best defensive player or at least prospect uh, in, the, in the entirety of college football and a guy named Derwin James who's back from injury. Um, and then they've got a returning quarterback that is a really good player, and he displayed a lot of toughness. And if you look at the quarterbacks that are able to succeed against Alabama, it's, yes, the ability to run and all that, but it's also the, the ability to endure Think about what Deshaun Watson and Chad Kelly had to go through to beat Alabama teams in the past, and that is generally in the first half and the first three quarters, enduring punishment. DeAndre Francois, guys, was sacked the 109th most times in the country last, uh, last, last year with, what, 36 sacks. This guy can endure punishment, and that's one of the necessary traits that you need to line up against Bama. I still think Bama edges them late, but I think it's a really close game, maybe a three-point game. Go ahead, St. Nick. Nah, you already know. You already know. I don't that, know what look, say. what is this, it going to be, 40 to 6? This is what you have to admire at most about Coach Saban in Alabama. They will play anybody, anywhere, anytime. He's not dipping a toe in the water like, ooh, I, I need to get my warm up. Florida State, you want to come see me in the new Mercedes Benz Dome? Come holler at your boy, St. Nick. So, route, what do you got? I got 10. By 10, ten. that's all? Yeah. Well, that's a close game. Hold on. They, Florida State got athletes too now, Skip. Oh. I mean, you make it seem like they're playing, playing uh, Rutgers. Okay, but I'm, I'm looking at Alabama's defensive backfield, Mel Kuyper's top 25 preseason. He's, the, the St. Nick's got three members of the Patrick. top 25 in this defensive backfield. That's pretty great, right? But they lost seven defensive starters yeah. to the draft. Yeah, but watch what'll happen. Just watch it'll be another big game, St. Nick, ain't Nick game. And, and watch, Florida State will score 30, but Alabama will score 40 because I don't think they can stop Bo Scarborough. And I, and I like Jalen Hurts more than you guys do. I know he struggled some down the stretch, but I think with Brian Dayball, they'll run the ball more. And, and I do think, you know, with Calvin Ridley, who's also in Mel's top 25, I think they're going to be a high-powered offense. So I'll, I'll say 40 to 30 Bama. Well, well, then what's your problem? I, I, again, that's a win. <laughs> okay, they win, but they'll give up 30, and you, you guys will say, oh, but that's, it's just mathematics because they, they threw the ball oh, you wanted to 74 hope. times, so they scored 30 <laughs> well, points. Skip, skip. skip. <laughs> what's, what is the point of the game tomorrow night? What's the point of the game tomorrow night? You to tell me, what was the, the point of the fight team. last weekend? If you are the, the greatest no, no, defensive no, mind in win. the history of pro football and college football. You can stop them and football. lose. Yeah. You can stop uh, them and really? lose. Oh, I mean, God. what is the point to win? I'm, I'm the actually game? giving St. Nick a compliment because usually they give up 40 in a big game. I can show you, like over the last stop three it, years, they've given up 10 40s. <laughs> you know, that's just terrible. Oh. But, but again, they'll give up only 30, so it'll be a pretty good St. Nick game. And they'll win by 10 because they'll just bulldoze Florida State's defense. Sure will. And they'll be having Every chicken Every time I come on here. Mm. And you start talking about Alabama, you bring up these these eight to ten games that apparently <laughs> Nick Saban and ten. the defense haven't eight been to up 10? to. Well, that's, that's a what lot. you say. That's what you say. Oh. I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna pose a challenge <laughs> to you. Oh, Find I'm a scared. team yeah. that has less than those eight games where they give up a lot of yards or points. You it guys, just doesn't happen. This is a volume sports Saint in college Nick. football. It is a you, volume you, sport. You call him St. Nick. The man I'm sitting across from has put him on the Mount Rushmore of the NBA, the NFL, no, and I college said that's football. That's college football. <laughs> really? It. Come on. He, I mean, come on. He's like the greatest defensive mind in football history, and yet I keep looking at gave up 40, gave up 40, gave up 40, 40, 40. Well, you what keep is this? Wanting, gave well, up three of the national stop, championship game to problem. LSU. Stop ah. back. 
stop backing him into the corner of just being a defensive coach. The guy is just a great football and, coach. And f- just furthermore, period. you know why? Because he wins the game, wins. which is the point. But, but Nick, Nick Saban is the hands-on coach of the secondary, and now he's got three players in that secondary in Mel's top 25 for next year's draft. Well, you should shut people down and shut them out oh, stop and watch. It. They'll give up 30, and you, oh. you guys will say, it's okay. It's the way That's college not what football, college football, football is, is anymore. There we go. I, I, it, I it, beat it you isn't. to the punch. It isn't. It isn't. Yeah. The, rules, the rules don't allow you to dominate oh. in pass defense like you did in the past. One, mm. the RPO game, run-pass option game, oh. it's afforded to you in college football. It's not in the NFL. You know why? Because the rule in college football is that ineligible receivers can and go three yards down the field so linemen can just block the run play. Mm. You know what a safety can't do? Get a run pass read. It's impossible. Mm. That's a total difference, which is one of the reasons why you can't do that. You could snap the ball 85 times. Teams are throwing it 60 and 65 times. Total passing defense is mm. a farce of a stat in college football. Mm. It matters what you do in the red zone, keeping points off the board, and it matters what you do per possession. Those are the numbers you should be looking at when evaluating college football. Passing defense. Come on, <laughs> Skip. What are we well, talking about? St. Nick and FSU tomorrow night. Tonight, Washington you know Rutgers me, at 7 Eastern on FS1. Roll, Roll Tide. Tide. With Joel and Gus Johnson on the call. Joel, thanks so much for joining us. No mercy. LeBron James and Ty Lu have, quote, cooled on the Isaiah Thomas trade after it was revealed that he could miss significant time with his hip injury. That was reported by The Ringer. A number of NBA executives also spoke to Bleacher Report anonymously and said the consensus around the league is that Kyrie is not a franchise player. They criticized Kyrie's defense and playmaking ability. Skip, what do you make of this? I make of it that these executives are all probably LeBron lovers. Oh, who, stop who, it, Skip! Who do, who they, they resent the fact that Kyrie wanted out of Cleveland because he just didn't like playing with LeBron James. So they're holding that against Kyrie. They're being overly critical of Kyrie, and I get it. He doesn't play great defense until it's really time, and when he's asked to, as he will be in Boston next year by Brad Stevens, that he'll He'll shock people with how well he can play defense because I thought two years ago in the finals against Steph, he was really good on defense. But you know what I love about all this? What? comes down to this question. Overrated, underrated Kyrie Irving. Did playing with LeBron James help him or did it hinder him? I'm going to go hinder. I'm going to go now that he's set free from LeBron, now that he is the man in Boston, Now that, by the way, Mr. Sharp, he embraced the opportunity to go to the arch rival and stay in the Eastern Conference so he could go head-to-head, face-to-face, nose-to-nose with one LeBron James, probably in the Eastern Conference Finals. I love it. I think he is... He he embraced the opportunity to show you, Mr. Sharp, Mm -hmm. that he is better than LeBron James as far as leading a team that will now eclipse LeBron's team. I'm not saying he's a better overall player, but that that he can be the man, that that he can dethrone LeBron in the East. He could have said, hey, I want out of here, but get me to the West. Let me go to Phoenix. Let me go somewhere else. But no, when presented the opportunity, and it sounded like he had sort of de facto – you know, where, uh, what do you call it, veto power right. of the trade, that he said, oh, I'd love to go to Boston. No, right. the only veto power he had is whether or not he would sign a long-term deal. Mm-hmm. He didn't have – LeBron well, James has no right. trade. No, I got it. Okay. But, but he said, I will commit long-term yeah. to Boston, right? Yeah. And by the way, my Spurs really wanted Kyrie Irving, yeah. just for the record. And, and then he wanted year, to go to the Spurs also. He did? Because Boston said, I'm looking at my list. My list says Minnesota, Spurs, Minnesota, the Knicks, and the Heat. Mm-hmm. Those were the teams, I mean – Mm. I'm looking for Boston. Mm. You pull up and see if Boston was on that original mm. list. Mm. Go ahead, but go ahead. Yeah, but, but again, that's an Eastern Conference team, not a Western Conference team, because he wants a little piece of LeBron here. Why didn't he say the Nets? So what are we looking at here in Kyrie Irving? Well, he became the closer of the Cleveland Cavaliers. Mm. Did Michael Jordan need a closer? I never heard that. You know, that that's just... This is not Michael Jordan. Okay. This is Kyrie. Okay. What did okay. what did the execs say? Okay. I don't care what they say. I know what <laughs> I think. Because in his career, 
in overtime games, Kyrie Irving has hit 48 of 50 free throws. That's just extraordinary. That's 96% of his free throws. LeBron career overtime regular season is 74%, which is not bad, but it's it's not Mount Rushmore. Can, can I know? ask you a question? Yeah. I mean, looking at your notes right there, yeah. how many of those uh, overtime games came in his first three years when LeBron wasn't there? I don't know. Okay. What's your research? No, 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 no. That's not. That's not for yeah. me to say. I, I don't I'm really gonna my, care. You gonna let me have a turn? I'm just getting started. You gonna let me finish? Okay, go ahead. Okay. So, who hit the shot of shots to win Game Seven of the Finals in 2016? Game Seven. I think. Oh, it was Kyrie Irving. Mm -hmm. And then Christmas Day, who hit the shot of shots in the big marquee national game on Christmas this last Christmas Day? I, oh wait, it was Kyrie Irving beat. Kevin Durant and the Golden State Warriors with a walk-off shot over a great defender in Klay Thompson. So now we got a Kyrie Irving that had a chance to close game three of the finals, which was the turning point of this past finals. But no, nope, LeBron took it upon himself for the last five possessions. He said, nope, get out of my way. I'm going to make this happen. And they blew a four-point lead with a minute and a half left in a game in which Kyrie did score 38 points on 16 or 29. He didn't make his three-point shots. Many, how many Bron had? 0 for 7. I forget. You but ain't forget. Then the one game that Cleveland won in last year's finals, Kyrie scored 40. And then the greatest show I think I've ever seen put on in a regular season game post-Michael Jordan. I guess Kobe's had a couple of them. But listen, Don't you say that Spurs hey, game. That Spurs game. That You want to talk about extraordinary? He scores 57, Kyrie did, they're draped all over him, and he hits a, a three, a buzzer-beating three to send it to overtime. It was like 57 points, stunning. Even you have admitted when he was on your team, because he was onk. He's still he onk. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. You he say onk. it sarcastically, <laughs> derisively, yeah. Best shot maker in basketball, best handle in basketball. I think as clutch as anybody in basketball, Russell Westbrook impressed me this year, but I don't think he's as clutch as, as this kid is. So now he's got his chance, and he wants to show that he can out LeBron LeBron. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to stick on Team Kyrie, except that team's now the Boston Celtics. Uh, I think the, the NBA execs are onto something mm. because we've seen over the last three years since LeBron has returned to Cleveland when LeBron didn't play and Kyrie had an opportunity to mm. lead. What's their record, Skip? Mm. What'd your researcher tell you? He said they're four and thirteen. Okay, four and thirteen. So we're gonna equate that to an 80, uh, 82 game season. You don't mind if I punch into my calculator mm. right quick? Is this your prediction for the oh, Celtics stop next it, year? Skip. I'm trying to. I'm trying to talk. Now I didn't interrupt you I'm one time. Hold your feet to the fire if you make a prediction. I'm, all I'm saying mm. is when Kyrie mm. was on the court. And LeBron didn't play. Mm. They were four, four and thirteen mm. over those three years. Okay. I'm trying to get the projections over an 82 you, game your season. Your researcher already. No, oh, yeah, he didn't give it to me. Let me see. He did. That's 19 games. Mm. They would have won 19 games. Mm. Guess how many games the Brooklyn Nets won last year? Mm. 20. So, Kyrie Irving. He would have been on the worst team in basketball. Uh, that, that might mean he's the worst player oh, in basketball. Oh, no, 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 no. But guess what happens when LeBron plays and Kyrie doesn't play over the last three years? Oh, Skip? man. 25 and 11. Mm. Let me put that in my calculator right quick. Mm. That's 57. Mm. That's 57 wins. So, let me get this straight. LeBron plays, they're the number one seed. Mm. Kyrie plays, LeBron doesn't, they're in line for the number one pick. See, they're both ones, okay, but, but wait, the one you don't want. Why did I just read a story last night that said that LeBron and Ty Lue are now very upset over the trade because they didn't get enough back because they got damaged goods? Yeah, I, but that's what I was telling well, you. Who cares if he's damaged? What do you need him for? You got LeBron. That's what you can oh, tell Oh, stop him. it, Skip. You what do you mean, stop it? You know what, Skip? You I mean, he's Mount Rushmore. And you said he's all the way to the left it, on Mount Rushmore. I, I said he's heading that way. He's oh. trending. He's okay. trending. Skip, mm -hmm. what we've seen from Kyrie is that when LeBron does not play and he was playing for the Cavaliers, mm -hmm. his numbers went up. Only his scoring. His assists stayed the same. Mm -hmm. His field goal percentage, it dipped. Mm -hmm. You know why? Mm -hmm. Because he's trying to take all the shots. Mm -hmm. Now, Skip, it's, it's no secret that his mentor, the guy that he idolized, is one Kobe Bryant. It was reported that after they won game seven against the uh, Golden State Warriors, he FaceTimed one Kobe Bryant from the locker room. Mm. So it's no coincidence that, and he's saying all this, you know, all Kobe and Shaq, you know, I don't, I'm not, I don't want to mess that up. I'm going to be a sponge. I would be foolish. I would be foolish. Foolish to want to leave this and not get all I could from LeBron. And all the while, he plotting and planning, lying in wait, scheming, cold blood, trying to take down the king. Mm. Be gone.
Mm. But guess what? Betrayal. So let mm. me, oh, well, you know, this is what Skip's going to say. Mm. Well, that squad was not suited to what Kyrie really does. All Kyrie needs somebody to do is rebound and set picks. That's what he really wants. Because do you think the Boston Celtics set their roster knowing they were going to get Kyrie? They was like, you know what? There's a chance we might get Kyrie. So this is what we need to do. We're going to trade Avery Bradley to Detroit so we can get Marcus Morris. Maybe, you know, we can sign Gordon Hayward so we'll be okay. Then we get Kyrie, pair him with Al Horford, Jalen Brown, Jason. Oh, we're going to be in the money. Mm. That's not what they did, Skip. Oh. And what they said is true. He makes absolutely no one better except himself. Mm. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see how Brad Stevens like a guy that doesn't play defense mm. and want to get all the shots mm. and doesn't make anybody better. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting. So Kyrie averaged a career high 25.2 in the regular season last year with LeBron and then in the playoffs 25.9 career high in the playoffs. Pretty good. You, you hold up. What, 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 what? No, no, no. You said you said something. He averaged twenty five point what? Two, Two and nine. Oh, okay. Yeah. But you said something. There was something in there. The four letter. LeBron. Oh, yeah. you, Joy. You, so he I, tried I, to lead that. I didn't enjoy. No. Be Joy, not her. I, I ask you the key question here: Help or hinder? Did LeBron hold him down or prop him up? You say propped him up. Yeah. I say held him back. So we're about to find out because I bet you he wasn't that, passing. Skip, he bet, needed a tutor. Well, I don't even know what he averaged in assists last year because I don't really care. Like five, 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 five like okay. five. Well, how about eight next year? Huh? Bet eight. Bet money. He don't eight. average. Bet money. He eight. don't average eight. I'll bet you eight. I bet you don't average seven. Oh, I would well, do. I'm gonna bet you don't average seven. I'm gonna go eight. What you want to bet? I, what did I tell you about Russell Westbrook last year? I he know, laughed at me. I'm not talking about Russell. Mm -hmm. I, I but, said triple-double. You want to talk about going out on a limb? Skip, here's the thing. Russell, we had seen Russell average 10 assists a game mm -hmm. already. We just didn't know if he was going to be able to get the rebound because we felt the rebounding was going to be hard mm. for a guy that size to get 10 rebounds, average 10 rebounds over an 82-game season. He still called it before the season. Yeah, okay, I, I get that. It hadn't happened in like 50 years or something. Okay, he got the, but I'm saying, it wasn't like you called a triple-double and he was averaging three assists a game. He averaged 10 the year before, mm. and he averaged seven rebounds. Mm. So why you, you go to 10? Oh, 11? You make it seem like the dude was averaging okay, 25 so and 5. Okay, so you say, Joy, 5.8? Yeah. Okay, so he's going to average two more assists a game, basically? No, no, he's not. Well, I'm just saying that's all. I'm, that's not a huge leap to me. And it you watch. Huge, it is a huge leap when he, that's not your mentality. He is the point guard, so he'll average eight. Well, it's like I'm going to start preparing my own meals at home. It's not a huge, I break breakfast. On the weekend. Did you so, see? Uh, did you see Kyrie's video? Yeah, man, I ain't watched that video. Uh, did he mention really LeBron nice. in that? He did not. Bro, I don't need. We don't need no mention. Uh. We got forty million Facebook followers. Uh. We got like fifty-five Wait, million. Is, uh, he, uh, is he throwing you a couple? Really? Yeah. No mercy. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed podcast. I'm Joy Taylor. We're back on Tuesday, same time, nine thirty Eastern. Have a great holiday weekend, everybody. Fox Sports One of One. one.